I want to say good day to you, everyone. How are you all? All right. All right. Thank you. Let us begin this transmission with the title that we have chosen called The Future of the Past. Let us begin by allowing us to read you a newspaper headline. JFK assassinated today in Boston, Massachusetts. This date, November 9th, 1968. What does this mean? This is a parallel reality, different from the one you now consider to be your history. And of course, there are many other versions of this scenario. We once shared with you that another version of your history that you experienced before the present one allowed this particular individual, your President Kennedy, to survive until your 1980s. But the one that we have mentioned today, November 9th, 1968, has a particular meaning to the history that you believe you remember. The idea is that history is not linear. It is holographic and is made of many different kinds of intrusions of parallel realities, at the very least, if not the events themselves, the effects of other events in other realities color what you consider to be your linear history. So to continue this example, the idea to remember is that what you think of history is always changing, always. When you as a collective group decide to shift to a particular parallel reality path, Remember that as you become a new society, as you become new people, you also create a new history to go along with that, to make sense out of the choice that you made in the present. Because the past is created from the present, not the other way around. So you have had many histories that you are now unaware of, because every time you change, you wipe the slate and create a new history that appears to be the only history you've ever had. So, several years ago, you actually had a different history than what you remember now. But you don't know that. But because we can see the bigger picture and all the lines of intersecting energies between different parallel realities, we can see the path that you've taken. In this particular case, let's say the original, one of the original history choices you made was that your President Kennedy was in fact assassinated in 1968. The reason for this is because near the end of his second term, he was about to reveal the existence of extraterrestrials. The idea is that it actually was revealed. And in that particular parallel history caused so much chaos and so much collapse in your society that he was labeled as the cause of it. And someone assassinated him for that reason. Now, because of the societal collapse in that particular history that went along with the revelation of our existence, you decided to shift as a society and take another path. And to prevent it from happening, you chose a history where he died in 1963, and therefore never had a chance to reveal what he had planned to reveal. However, to illustrate the point that your history isn't linear, that it is affected by ripples from other parallel realities all the time. Because the original assassination occurred in 1968, based on the idea of the collapse of society, it created a very strong eddy, a very strong current 
in the fabric of space-time. <clears throat> so even when you shifted your collective consciousness to the idea of a history in which he died in 1963, effects from the original 1968 still existed and still impacted the new history, which is why Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King were assassinated in 1968. So if you begin to understand how this actually works, you can see that what you consider to be a linear history back in time is actually composed of many different parallel reality ripples and effects that all come together and change every single time that you change your idea of what your present is that then changes what your idea of your history ought to be in order for that history to have brought you to the new present that you're at because you still have to do it in a linear way to play the physical reality game. But in understanding this holographic nature of history, you can never really look at the idea of history in a linear way again. You will understand that it is a composite of many different overlapping realities and it is constantly dynamically changing every time you make any change whatsoever. Not just the societal level, but your own personal histories as well. Because as you become a new person, every time you redefine yourself, you create a new history for yourself. Now, if it seems to be the same, again, this is because you have wiped the memory of the old history, and the new history must appear to be the only history that's ever been there in order for it to make sense for the person you've defined yourself to be in present. Now, this doesn't mean that you don't sometimes choose to recreate similar events over and over and over again every time you define yourself and create a similar history to some degree. This does happen because most of you have an agreement not to necessarily go too far in breaking the continuity of your mass consensus reality about what your history ought to be based on who you consider yourselves to be or define yourselves to be in the present. Nevertheless, this points out that you always, every single moment, have a choice to change your past as you change your present. And to understand that the more you wrap your mind around this, the more you allow yourself to understand how this works and how it's structured more holographically, you have more opportunity to, within relevant parameters for your life, break that continuity more and more and more. And the breaking of that continuity will create more shall we say, fluidity and flexibility within how you experience space and time, which means you will experience an increase in synchronicity, which is physical reality's linear space-time way of showing you that all things exist at once, that they're all interconnected. You will increase your experiences of things like deja vu, which is experiencing the idea of the forward arrow of time and the backward arrow of time simultaneously because you have the feeling in deja vu that you know what's about to happen because it feels like it's already happened before. So you're getting both arrows of time simultaneously by expanding your consciousness to incorporate that idea. You will increase many other kinds of experiences in physical reality, but what it will mostly allow you to do when you really understand this concept is truly be more lucid in the physical reality dream and truly be more conscious about the kinds of choices you are making, the kinds of ways in which you define yourself and what's true for you, and exactly what that does to the entire linear space-time reality when you do that. And it will give you more understanding of how you are creating your reality experience because physical reality is just a projection, it's just a dream and it's all about becoming more and more lucid in the physical dream and waking up in that lucidity and then knowing more and more, and again, whatever way is relevant for you, that you can bend the idea of space and time because you're actually doing it all the time anyway. It's just that you're becoming more conscious of the mechanism that you're using. That's what's going on in this transformational age. You're becoming more conscious of what you're already doing. 
It's no longer being seen in an illusionary way, as if it were real. You're beginning to break through the veil and see it for the illusion that it is. Now, this won't completely go away while you still choose to be physical, but it will give you a lot more flexibility in how you experience your physical reality. It will still always be relevant. Whatever comes up will always be relevant for the life path you chose, for the theme you chose to explore. It won't go beyond that relevance. But there are different degrees of relevance for many different people on your planet. <clears throat> so many of you will start to experience more magical experiences in physical reality. You will see that it is more flexible, more synchronous, and always has been. It's just, again, that you're becoming more and more aware of it. So the idea is that in the future, your history will really start to more consciously match what you define yourself to be in the present. So the future of history, the future of the past, is very open, very flexible, and you're beginning to understand that the past is just as indeterminate as the future is. That the probabilities of what might become your future also are the probabilities of what might become your past. Because these are both projections from the only place you actually exist. The present. That's all there is. There is only here. There is only now. So everything that is happening, everything that you think will happen, everything you think has happened, is just another projection, another reflection, another perspective of the now. And that's why when you change the now, everything else has to change, both the future and the past, because they're just reflections of what you're defining yourself to be now and are as ephemeral as a reflection in a mirror. They do not have real solidity. You play the game that they do, and that's fine. But now is the time to allow yourself some leeway, some permission to break that continuity to the degree that truly serves you to experience yourself as the creator of your reality experience. Because remember, as we have said before, your natural state is one of spirit. You're all still in spirit right now. It's just that you're dreaming that you're not. That's what physical reality is. You have never left spirit. You can't leave spirit, but you can dream that you can. And that's what this is. And we're sharing that dream together by agreeing to do so. And remember that you are redefining yourself billions of times per second. Your consciousness is slipping through billions of parallel reality frames per second. So at any given moment, at any given moment, you are always back to zero. You always have a clean slate. You always have the ability to redefine yourself in whatever way is truly relevant for the theme you chose to explore. And there's a lot of leeway in that. None of you are stuck in any way, shape, or form especially not in this day and age. This is all about understanding consciousness, that you are an expression of consciousness, and that time and space are your illusions to play with, are your projections, are your tools to discover yourself from a new perspective, a new point of view. Because if you don't forget who you are, you can't remember who you are from another point of view. That's why you have this physical dream. To discover a new idea of yourself, a new perspective of yourself, a new relationship to all that is of yourself as an aspect of all that is. Does this make some sense to you? <clears throat> all right. So, we share that idea with you that history is always changing never static, exactly to the same degree that you believe your future probabilities change. But you, here, squarely in the middle, in the now, in the present, the fundamental you never changes. The structure of your consciousness never changes. The expression of it does, the form of it does, but the basic fundamental you will always be you. It will always be your perspective from which you are having 
any experience of a future or a past. It will always be from your perspective that you will have any experience of physical or non-physical reality. It will always be you from your perspective that will have any experiences of other dimensions, other realms, other parallel realities, anything you can imagine, it will always be you having the experience because you are the constant. You are the structure that never changes. But your relationship to yourself, your perspective of yourself always changes. Your experience of yourself always changes. And you get to decide in what direction it will change. The more lucid you become in this physical dream, the more you surrender to your true self, the more you will realize that surrender is actually control because you are already in control. You've just forgotten that you are. So remind yourself and play with this idea of holographic history and see the bigger picture so that you can understand the relationship of how parallel realities work together to create not only the probable future, but the probable past, and how this informs you so that you can make more aligned, more harmonious decisions about who and what you choose to be in the present. Does this make sense? Oh.